Welcome back to the Goofy Rebuilds, where today, we are doing possibly the goofiest rebuild I have ever done. We are gonna be doing a fantasy draft, where I have to pick the worst player available at any given position. You know, I've seen fantasy drafts where you have to take the best player available, which can be a disadvantage because there can be a lot of doubling up on positions, but this is like that, <laughs> but maybe 20 times worse. Almost think of this as a zero overall rebuild, in a way. But but I am way too excited to get into this. This is gonna be fun. And if you wanna see another extreme, goofy fantasy draft rebuild challenge, I guess you could call this. This is almost beyond a challenge. But if you wanna see more like this, let me know by leaving a like. And if we can get to just 2,500 likes on this video, which we've been easily hitting lately, I should probably set it higher, but whatever. If we hit 2,500 likes, it'll let me know y'all wanna see another one of these. Different idea, but still an extreme fantasy draft rebuild. And no shout out for this. This one, this was just kind of something I came up with, I think. But most of the rebuilds I do are from comment suggestions, so if you want to shout out, or if you just want to let me know what you want to see, let me know that down in the comments. Because like I said, that's where I get most of my rebuild ideas. And it helps me know what y'all want to see. And last thing, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Even though football is over for the year, or well, <laughs> the season, still a lot more fun stuff coming really soon. With free agency and the draft and all that. Trying to hit 50k by the end of the month, so be sure to subscribe, it'll make you an OG of the channel for for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers, definitely. But without further ado, let's get into this fantasy draft. Oh great, we get pick 30. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter anyways. I guess I'll take a bad pick in this rebuild <laughs> rather than one where it matters. But out of curiosity, I know in the fantasy drafts, it doesn't show you every player in the league until like the end. Okay, it does show a lot of them. Ooh, Kurt Benkert is here. I mean, that would be cheating. That would be kind of fun though. Should I bend the rules a little bit already? <laughs> I mean, it's a one overall difference, and it's not gonna make an effect on the rebuild. You know what? We'll go with Kurt Benkert as our first pick. Cheating, maybe, it, close enough. I'm not gonna show every pick here. I'm probably only gonna show a couple, but Deuce Vaughn, ooh. We're gonna get some players here that could be around for the whole rebuild, and he's only 21. I, he's probably 22 in real life by this point, but in the game, he's only 21, so we should be able to develop him. Let's take him. Great pick, rank 990. <laughs> Picked him at 35. What a steal. But no, we we might have something there. We'll see. Ooh, Jonathan Mingo. Hidden Dev. Sure. We have a few tight ends to pick from. How old's Will Mallory? 24. Hendershot is also 24. I think Higgins is 22. Sure, we'll go Elijah Higgins. I'm pretty sure he's a converted receiver. Emmanuel Forbes. Sure. I mean, he is Hidden Dev. He was pretty terrible as a rookie. He got better throughout the year, but we'll take the Hidden Dev. Ooh, the linebackers aren't great. Trenton Simpson. Does he have a Dev trait? He does. We'll do that. All right, and I don't want to waste y'all's time too much, so let's go last pick. Ja'Kalen Roy, I, before he got drafted, I remember taking him like a million times in rebuilds. So we'll have a little throwback to, I guess, a year ago, and he will be our last pick. Well, I'm going to make all the rest of these picks, but the last pick that I show. Rank number 1596, again, great value. But here we are after the draft, and speaking of the zero overall rebuilds, this might be the worst team we have ever started with with that wasn't a zero overall team. We're a 60 overall. And what's arguably worse is this team isn't that young. Well, all these players right here are, but especially on like the offensive line, nobody's gonna develop there like at all. But this is the team <laughs> heading in to year one. We have a 59 overall offense and a 63 overall defense. I think the best part about this team is the receiving core though. It's a lot of rookies, a lot of younger guys. I think it's all rookies. Was Justin Shorter a rookie this year? Yeah, I think it is all rookies. And of course, we'll see how Kurt Benkert does. The defense is a lot younger than the offense, at least with the starters. There were no good pass rushers available, though. That's the big flaw of our defense. But the corner group is really good. Emmanuel Forbes, Riley Moss, and Carrington Valentine are going to be our corners. I also took Eli Ricks to put him at safety. And something interesting is Trenton Simpson would go up to a 70 at outside linebacker, which I'm not going to do year one because he'll definitely develop more at middle linebacker. I mean, he could win defensive rookie of the year because our defense is just going to be on the field for 90% of the game. So he'll just rack up tackles. So we'll try to get him defensive rookie of the year. Hopefully he can get it. But this is a super interesting starting team. And honestly, a lot of these players we could still have by the end of this rebuild, at least a few. But without further ado, let's get into the season. Let's get to the midseason point and let's see how this team does. But Trey Tucker got Parker Washington star 
dev. It's always weird to have a rookie mentor a rookie, but we'll definitely take it. But at the mid-season point of year one, we are 0-7. <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised by that. I just, you know, I, I know Madden's kind of kind of off the Yerk 30 sometimes. This game's absolutely brain dead with its simulation. So I thought we could sneak a few wins with a 60 overall team, but but no. I thought our GOAT, Kurt Ben Kurt, could carry us, but oh, definitely not so far. But this is only the beginning. I mean, we shouldn't have any wins this year. We do have some re-signings, though, already. Jonathan Mingo, Trenton Simpson, that's mostly it, I guess. Jonathan Mingo will offer four years, 18.8 .8 mil. He doesn't take it, whatever. We'll re-sign him at the end of the year. And then Trenton Simpson, this is super cheap. Four years, 10.8 mil, he takes it. I guess Nick Jones is only 20, we'll re-sign him. Okay or not, whatever. But really short mid-season, and let's get to the end of the year. Okay, well, unsurprisingly, we finish 0-17. We somehow didn't have the worst pass D in the league. The defensive yard stats are, so, like, so stupid, though. They almost feel like they work in reverse. Like, you can have all 90 overall corners, 90 overall safeties, a 90 overall front seven, and you can still finish with, like, the 27th pass D in the league. It's, it's always, it's something. But let's check out our season stats. Okay, Okay. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be keeping Kurt Benkert. 2,500 yards, five touchdown passes to 21 interceptions. Now, <laughs> to be fair, he doesn't have a lot of help, but uh, that's, that's that's not great. Deuce Vaughn was pretty terrible. 600 yards, only 3.2 per carry, four touchdowns. Jonathan Mingo might have been our best offensive player. 849 yards, two touchdowns. Washington was okay. Ooh, the blocking wasn't great. Darren Paulo allowed seven. 17 sacks. I've I've seen worse than this. It wasn't good, but I thought it would be worse. Uh, unfortunately, Trenton Simpson didn't have like an insane, insane year. 154 tackles is a lot, obviously. Four tackles for loss, a sack and a half and a pick. How many? Okay, those are like decent stats. I mean, those are good numbers, but how many snaps did he play? That's the thing. Almost 1,200. <laughs> okay, I would hope for a little more than this in 1,200 snaps, but I guess we'll take it. Tackles for loss, 12 from Vohasek, 10 for Dixon, sacks, two and a half for Kongbo, a sack and a half for Dixon and Simpson, and picks, three for Riley Moss. He was actually pretty good. He almost put up better numbers than Trenton Simpson did. That's kind of crazy. And then a pick for Simpson, Toa Toe, Valentine, Ricks, and Forbes. I, we might get defensive rookie of the year. I mean, the tackles kind of carry. We'll see. Trevor Lawrence wins MVP, though. I've been seeing him win a lot of MVPs lately for some reason. We have Aaron Rodgers on the 49ers. I mean, that was the whole thing about that draft. They picked Alex Smith instead of Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers ended up falling. <laughs> Mahomes on the Titans. Josh Allen on the Rams. I could see that for some weird, sadistic reason. Oh, Lamar on the Ravens. That's weird. Never would have thought of that. Offensive player of the year goes to Derrick Henry on the Seahawks. No Giants. Big shocker there. Did I say rookie of the year? I don't know what I said. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Now on the Cowboys. Micah Parsons on the Eagles. That's cursed. No Giants up there. So that doesn't get... Aw, oh, I don't think we're gonna get it. Jalen Carter was up there at number eight. That sucks. Okay, well, Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Rasheed Rice on the Cowboys. Mingo at number 10. And yeah, we get cucked, of course. Jalen Carter wins it on the Bears. Simpson at two, Moss at three. That sucks. But here's the thing. He still might get a dev up because he had so many tackles. So it might not matter that he didn't win Defensive Rookie of the Year. We'll see. He made the Pro Bowl. That's cool. I never really check this at this point. So I never see Pro Bowls and stuff. Plus 10 upgrade. What does that mean? Oh, his re Oh, I see. Never mind. But let's get into the offseason. And by the start of next year, this team should be massively upgraded. Ooh, <laughs> that's a Super Bowl. The, the Saints beat the Raiders 38 to 17. I feel like if there was a fantasy draft, I always say something like this whenever there is a fantasy draft. I don't know why. But I feel like just whichever team has the best coaching staff would become the next best team. Like the Chiefs would stay good. The Steelers. Steelers would probably stay good. The 49ers would stay good. I think the Rams would be really good. Maybe hot take. I think Sean McVay might be the best head coach in the NFL. I really like him. I don't, I don't know if the Saints would be 
super good if this happened. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of their coaching staff, but hey, I guess I guess you never know. But we do get an upgrade for Trenton Simpson and moment of truth, did he go up in dev trait? He did. Okay, that's massive. And yeah, he was the NFL tackles leader. If he got defensive rookie of the year, I should know how this works. I just can never really remember or I don't pay attention to it. But if he also got defensive rookie of the year, would he got would he have gone up to X factor? I guess he might. Oh, well, I don't know. I guess I've seen it happen where, you know, they're like the tackles leader in defensive rookie of the year and they do get X factor. Like they go up two devs or it doesn't happen. They go up one dev. I guess it just depends. I don't know. But for re-signings, really the only player I want to bring back is Jonathan Mingo. Oh yeah, I guess I should also check. I highly doubt it, <laughs> but just, just to, just to be sure, did we hit any other dev ups? Any other dev traits? None on offense. That's not surprising, but how about defense? Oh, okay. We hit a few more than I expected. We got Riley Moss, which I did expect because he had a good amount of picks. He had what? Three picks. He had a ton of tackles. So that's nice. Eli Ricks got a dev trait, I guess maybe for also tackles. I don't know. He wasn't like exceptional based off his stats. And then Rashad Torrance, almost 100, 100 tackles, five TFLs. He was all right. No picks, only two pass deflections. Maybe not the best in coverage based off the pass deflections, but he got a dev trait, so we'll take it. Might not matter because we might dr just draft another safety this year, but we'll see. But Jonathan Mingo, I do want back. We'll go very player friendly. We'll up it to, I guess, four years, 38 mil. He should take that. That's a lot more than he's asking. And he does. Okay, cool. And then everyone else is just backups. So let's get into free agency. And this is where I'm probably going to be boring. I don't know if I'm going to do too much unless they're like really young, good dev trait players. We'll see. Or if there's someone really good, but usually in fantasy drafts, they're just, there isn't, at least in year one. <laughs> okay, I take that back. There's one good player in Creed Humphrey, but he is, he, he's not interested at all. And he has 31 other offers. Every other team in the league is offering him a deal. Tariq Woolen's here. That's something. He also has 25 offers and isn't interested. We could get Zach Wilson. I kind of want to do that. You know what? Well, this would be kind of pointless because we're just going to draft a QB. Trey Lance, he's pretty good in this game. I don't mean overall wise, but performance wise, he usually does pretty well. There are a few quarterbacks that are kind of like that. We could get Jalen Hyatt too. I don't know how much playing time he would get, but he might start. Darnell Washington, he's interested. Sure. <laughs> we definitely should go for offensive linemen. Ricky Stromberg, he has star dev. Okay, I'm not going to mention every player we're going to sign, but I'll look through here and we'll see what players we want to get. Okay, we're actually going to go for a lot of players. <laughs> you know, being 0-17 isn't exactly great, believe it or not. So we're going to try to make sure that we don't go 0-17 again. We're going to go for a lot of younger players. Pretty much nobody under 24 except Byron Young, but I'm pretty sure Byron Young does pretty well in this game. So most of these players will probably start next year. I want to try to trade down in the draft just to try to get as many picks as possible unless, you know, I see someone we can't pass on. I'm really, really starting to like the strategy of trading down and just getting as many picks as possible. But especially, especially when we have a team that looks like this, where we just need as many players as we can get. No guarantee that we'll trade our first round pick down. It'll be number one overall, but we might. But we are going to go for all these guys. You see them. I don't feel like naming everyone. And let's see if they want to sign. Okay, so we get every, well, I don't know if we got everyone, but it looks like we did. Nobody rejected us. The only two that don't sign yet are Trey Lance and Tyler Lacey. Do they want to sign now? Oh, and they do. Okay, cool. So it looks like we get everyone now up to a 69 overall team. Nice. And let's get to the draft. Okay, I think we will trade this pick down because unfortunately, there just isn't a good QB. You hate to see it. I mean, there are a couple second to third round gu third round guys. If if Kyle Larson is available in the second round, I'll definitely take him because I want somebody at QB. I doubt Ro Rod, da who spells it with two Ds? Rod Davis, I doubt he'll be a bit available in the second. I wish I could get my words out today. But yeah, if Larson's available in the second, we'll take him. Doug Knighton looks good too. He has F medium route. It it shouldn't matter for a, a, a deep threat necessarily, but in this game, it, it matters. I don't think he's going to be a very good player, but we are going to trade this pick down. I Here's what I want. I want two firsts this year. Oh God. Okay. This would actually almost be perfect. Wait, we only trade down two spots and get 28. Let me see what the, the draft value calculator thinks about this trade. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to do 
this. Assuming it goes through, it might not. Okay, it does. We are trading one for three, 28. I can't remember what the third is. It's like 97 or something. I don't know. And then a second next year for our number one pick and a fourth round pick. Or no, wait, a third being 97 wouldn't make sense. What is it? 92, so it's a really late second, but that, or really late third, but that's fine. The Bears are gonna do something incredibly stupid with this pick though. <laughs> there aren't any QBs that are worth taking. I just know they're gonna take something they don't need. They go with a D lineman. Let's see how little they needed a defensive lineman. <laughs> yeah, Greg Rousseau, Carl Granderson, Jalen Carter, Daquan Jones. Yeah, that screams need. Surely that guy will get playing time. But honestly, I don't know if we traded down far enough. There still isn't really anyone I want here. How does Marquis Barrett look? I didn't even look at him because I thought we would trade down a lot farther. He doesn't look that good, honestly. I mean, he looks good. Not worth the third pick, though. Bob Wooden looks pretty good in the second to third round. We might take him later. God, what do I even want here? Justin Johnson looks decent. Nothing elite at the combine, but a few greats. Again, not worth the third pick, though. There's Duke Cooper, who I focus scouted. His block shed isn't great. Neither, the, neither is his play rec, but good speed, elite jumping, great acceleration, good strength. He looks decent. Well, he looks good. I just don't know if he's worth this pick. Let me get a look through here and I'll see what we want to do. This is kind of tough. Jamarcus Duggins looks pretty good. Good speed, great strength, great acceleration, but he's also 271 and he would be an outside linebacker. So I don't know about that. How we feeling about the rare double trade down? How we feeling about another first round pick this year? I never promised this would be a realistic rebuild. <laughs> Number seven and 24 sounds good. We're going to have three first round picks this year. And honestly, I don't like the first round. So I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what to do with this pick. This is going to be a massive reach. I already know. I want to take a chance on Vaughn Alexander. I think he could have a dev trait. His elite jumping, elite acceleration, great speed, great agility, great uh, change of direction. That all sounds great, right? His ratings just aren't that good though. <laughs> C pursuit, B awareness, and B play rack in the top 10. We don't even know if he is A finesse, but I, I just think he could have a dev trait. This could be a an all-timer of a reach, and I'm acknowledging that, but there is just nobody that looks good here. So let's go with Vaughn Alexander. Okay, <laughs> well, he doesn't have a dev trait. He's gonna be like a 74 overall. That's tough. Am I, did I, what did I just do? Why did it skip right to our next pick? Did I do that? Also, that sucks. There goes the tight end I wanted, a pick before us, Travis Howard. Greg Bush is still here. He didn't look great though. Brian Russell looks pretty good. Oh, he's, he's a second to third round. Okay, I was about to take him here. I guess we couldn't. It would probably be worth it, but eh. I love this game. This Braylon Mays guy ran a 4.39 and a 4.34, and he only has good speed and solid acceleration. That's great. This draft class looks so terrible. This might be one of the worst I've ever seen. Let's go with Bryce Mallard, though. Another D lineman. He looks pretty good. Elite strength, good speed, great excel. Good ratings. The thing I learned to look for with defensive tackles is block shedding, so we'll see if he's good. He is hidden dev, 95 strength. Cool. Why is it do- is that a setting? It's automatically skipping to our next pick. Why? I must have messed some setting up. I don't know. Or it's a new glitch, which let's just add another one to the pile of about 10 million. Let's go with Brian Russell, though. He looks decent at tight end. Hidden dev, 86 speed, 87 excel. I wanted the other one, but we should get cucked again. <laughs> and let's go with the one corner, Bob Wooden. He looked pretty good. Great speed and acceleration. Oh, his pursuit kind of, or his awareness kind of sucks. He is a man, though. B zone. I wish he didn't have C to F awareness, but he still looks good. Let's take him. Another hidden dev, 94 speed. What if I want to trade back? Why is it, or like trade up or something? I hope that's something they fix or just a setting I messed with. I don't like that it's automatically pushing us to our next pick. I mean, that's what it does in fantasy drafts. Maybe it's just a glitch I've never seen that happens if you do a fantasy draft. It does it for the actual drafts too. Oh, that is a fast center. Good Lord. 4.8 speed at the combine, 4.75 at his pro day. He didn't look that good other than that, but he is fast. Jaden Hayden, what a name. Jose Widmer looks pretty good. I really do like the pass protector type guards. They're usually pretty good, so we'll take him. Hidden dev, 87 strength, we'll take it. He's probably gonna be like a 75 or something. But I'll make a couple more picks and I will see y'all for the draft recap. I don't know how I'm feeling about this draft, but tried my best. Oh my God, okay, this was a really 
really, really bad draft class. We did really well, though. Von Alexander's better than I expected. He's a 77. He is not what I expected. I thought he would be a lower overall with a good dev trait. He's a pretty good overall based on the rest of the players in this draft class with normal dev. He might go down at outside linebacker, but he is a fast player, so maybe not. He goes down one. That's fine. Bryce Mallard is only a 77. I th Well, no, that's about what I expected. He's good. I mean, the second best player in the class. Oh, that was a great trade up for the Bears. Why was this draft class so terrible? But the second best player in the class was a 77, and we happened to get three 77s in Mallard, Wooden, and then Alexander was a 77. So we literally got three of the four best players in the class. Oh yeah, and what was the tight end? Who took him the, it was the Vikings. Oh, I mean, he was the same overall as our guy, 74. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, Brian Russell, 74. Wooden is a 74. Jose Widmer is a 75. That was a pretty good guess. Anthony Belfort, I kind of thought would be better. He was another really fast center. And I saw 90 strength when we picked him and I was like, oh, but he'll still start. He's a 72. I made every pick in this draft. I honestly thought Jake Phillips would be a good kicker. <laughs> he's, he's fine. I thought Webster would be a lot better, but I don't really care. And then Dent has a dev trait. So hey, terrible draft class, but we got like most of the good players from this draft class. So let's get into year two. But here's a look at the team heading into year two. It is an interesting team. We definitely uh, achieved my goal of trading down. <laughs> I just wish it was a stronger draft class. I don't know why it was so terrible. That genuinely, I use the, the strong draft classes too. Like, I, I don't know what that was, but I genuinely did about as well as I could have. But we are definitely much improved on last year. We're 12 overall better, and we should develop a lot throughout the year with all the rookies and now good dev trait players. I don't think we'll be an 80 by the end of the year, but by the end of this off season, we definitely could be. So I'm excited to get into this season. I'm excited to see how Trey Lance will do. He's an interesting player. I mean, he just really wasn't a good fit in San Francisco. And like I've said, I just, I've seen him do well in this game before. So we'll see what happens. This is an incredibly young team. And let's see what our record is gonna be at the mid season. Okay, well, we do have a win. <laughs> just one, but it's better than nothing. We actually have a pretty good defense. Number 18 in points per game, which isn't great, but I mean, we have a 73 overall defense, so that's that's pretty good. We have the second best pass D and the seventh best run D with a, with a 73 overall defense. We have the worst offense, which makes sense, but <laughs> that's still really interesting. Let's see, though. I want to see our dev traits. Do we have any good ones? Okay, we don't have any of them revealed on offense. How about defense? Okay, well, <laughs> that sucks. Both Mallard and Wooden, that was a terrible draft class. Both of them only have star dev, unlucky. And we'll see what Belfort's and Widmer's are. They're both just star, it looks like. Belfort's only gone up one overall and Widmer's hasn't gone up an overall at all. So that's unlucky. But let's check out re-signings. We have Parker Washington, Riley Moss, Deuce Vaughn. I don't think I'm gonna be bringing him back because he is very bad in this game as most running backs are in this game or a lot of them. But Parker Washington will go three years, 15 mil. He takes it. Riley Moss, five years, 17 mil, weird contract. And then I think that's all we're gonna worry about for now. So hey, at least we have a win so far. The Packers are 0-7. That's, that's tough. But let's get to the end of the season and we will see if we can get any more wins on the season. But honestly, if not, that's fine because we have a 73 overall team. Okay, well, I mean, we, we had a win this year. We'll be positive about it, but we don't get another win the rest of the year, unfortunately. We did have a really good pass D, almost top 10, but that was pretty much the only thing about the team that wasn't dead last in the league. Our season stats are, are interesting. <laughs> Trey Lance was also really bad. I'm starting to wonder if the Giants offense of playbook is like terrible because this season is very similar to the one Kurt Ben Kurt had and like I was saying Trey Lance is usually at least decent in this game six touchdowns 22 interceptions not exactly decent Deuce Vaughn was pretty much the same as last year I mean a, a couple hundred more yards but again 3.2 per carry that's not great Jonathan Mingo only 700 yards was our leading receiver two touchdowns Russell as a rookie did not a whole lot oh okay our line wasn't terrible but Wanya Morris allowed 20 sacks. 20. Why? <laughs> okay, well, we need a left tackle. Belfort also wasn't great. Trenton Simpson had 127 tackles. Tackles for loss, 14 for Alexander as a rookie, and Byron Young, 13 for... God, I, I didn't even realize I did that. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. That's confusing. Well, 14 for the defensive lineman, Byron Young. 13 for the, the edge rusher, the outside linebacker, Byron Young. 12 for Mallard as a rookie. 
and sacks. Seven and a half for Von Alexander. He was actually pretty good. He'll probably get cucked. He'll probably get number two, but <laughs> he did well. Four for Mallard as a rookie, three for Young, three and, or three and a half for Young and Lacey. And then interceptions, two for Torrance and Simpson, and then one for a few players. That was definitely a season. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mac Jones <laughs> wins MVP on the Browns. Well, I can't really complain about uh, too common of players winning MVP in this rebuild because our two MVPs have been Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones. The simulation really loves the, the 2021 QB class for some reason. I mean, Lawrence is good. Lawrence is pretty underrated, but uh, Mac Jones. Offensive player of the year goes to Puka Nakua on the Vikings. McCaffrey back on the Panthers. That's kind of fun. Probably just get hurt again immediately, but it's interesting to see here. What team are we? We're the Giants. I'm stupid. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Big shocker there. No Giants at all. That's tough. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jeremiah Pendleton for the Saints. Russell at number five. Webster at number six. And defensive rookie of the year does go to Vaughn Alexander. We'll take it. Mallard at three. Wooden at six. He didn't really do a whole lot, but at least he was up here. But I'm... I'm thinking about a new offensive playbook. I mean, we're not good at running the ball anyways. So what if we just go with like the most pass heavy offense? I guess we're not good at passing the ball, but I think that's more of a product of our, our offensive playbook, which is weird because normally in these fantasy drafts, the Giants are one of the better teams. Like they'll win a decent amount of Super Bowls. The Bills, I do kind of like the Bills offensive playbook. I'm not gonna lie. Geno Smith back on the Jets. We're having a lot of like returns. Jake Browning stays on the Bengals here. He isn't doing great though. God. God, Trey Lance was the worst QB in the league by a lot. Just going off passer rating, <laughs> he had a 52.4. The next closest for a full starter was Jake Browning with a 77.4, which is still really bad. Yikes. <laughs> do I want to be boring and just go with the Chiefs playbook, though? I mean, I do kind of like our tight end. Yeah, I think we'll be boring. I haven't been using it much lately. I think I used it in the last rebuild, but before then, it's been like months. So we'll try that. Hopefully it does better. But let's get into the offseason in this. This year, we should really be able to make this team decent. This is probably going to be a year four or a year five rebuild to get this team really good, though. But I, I think we can do it. I don't know how it'll perform, but on paper, it should be good. But in the Super Bowl, love to see that as a Seahawks fan. The Seahawks win 34 to 28 over the Titans, who are led by Patrick Mahomes. Who's the Seahawks QB, though? Oh, yeah, Kenny Pickett. That's <laughs> something. I, I've i mentioned this a few times on the channel before. I feel like Kenny Pickett's actually a decent QB. QB. His stats are never good, but I just think looking at stats is stupid. People forget that, you know, he had Matt Canada as his offensive coordinator, and he has had a lot of dropped passes from receivers in his career. A decent amount for interceptions. Also, his hair is spazzing out. I don't know if I'd call him good, but I see a lot of people saying he's like the worst quarterback in the league. I don't, I don't know about that. He's okay, at least I think. But we do get an upgrade here for Vaughn Alexander. He goes up to an 80 overall, and he goes straight to superstar. Okay, I didn't think he would. It doesn't really say why he got the star dev, but defensive rookie of the year gets him the superstar. Did he have 15? Ta no, he had 14 tackles for loss. I guess just something made him get superstar. We'll take that. Let's see if we got any other dev ups. None on offense. And I don't think we got one on defense. That's unlucky. But again, let's get into the offseason. And let's see if there's anyone we want to re-sign. I can't remember. Deuce Vaughn. Eh, I'm kind of good on everybody here. I guess I'll re-sign Brandon Aubrey because I don't feel like getting another kicker and he's interested. Cool. But let's get into free agency. And hopefully there are some good players that are interested in the team this year. But I will see. We need a left tackle. Okay. There are kind of some players here. I want to get a running back. We'll do that. At, but let me look through here and I'll see what we want to do. Okay, we're actually going to go for a few players. We're going to go for Garrett Bowles, which is a risk because sometimes he's really terrible in this game, but it looks like he's been good here. I can't show his stats because it'll withdraw the offer and I don't want to have to resubmit it, but it looks like he's been doing pretty well. We're going to go for Chuba Hubbard. He isn't the highest overall guy, but again, just with how they perform in this game and their overall being two different things, you know, Kyron Williams is the higher overall but he, every time I use him, he low-key kind of is terrible. So we're going to go for Chuba Hubbard instead. We'll see how he does. We're also going to go for Khalil Shakir. We're having to pay him a decent amount of money, but we don't have like any receivers higher than a 75. Hopefully we can also draft one this year. We'll see. And then Trayvon Merrig, we're also going to go for. So let's see if we can get these four players. Okay, we get Bulls and Merrig. We don't get Khalil Shakir, which is kind of crazy 
because we pay we were offering him a crazy amount of money <laughs> but maybe that's for the best we'll definitely want to look for a good receiver this year though but chuba hubbard do you want to sign i don't know what i just did he still doesn't want to sign how about now okay and he finally does so we still need a qb i haven't checked the the qbs in the draft yet hopefully they're pretty good but let's get to the draft and we will see what we can do Okay, well, this is a very, very, very interesting draft class. I want to trade this down. Here's the thing. I wish there were picks, or I wish there were teams with multiple first-round picks still. It's just the CPU doesn't have the logic to, you know, trade for most of the time. I mean, they do, but no, like, big trades. Here's why this class is interesting. We have the number one pick, and there are two good QBs in this class. There is Colin Chambers, who's projected to go in the first round. He's a first-round talent. Looks pretty good, right? But there's also... Max Sutton, who's projected to go rounds two to three. Oh, I didn't look at him yet. This dude's really only a first round talent. This guy isn't a top five talent. He has 4-3 speed, a 4-2-8 at his pro day. He has elite throw power, speed, jumping, acceleration, great strength, change of direction, and agility. He doesn't have a passing stat below a B. He has A, short accuracy, throw on the run, throw under pressure, awareness, and break sack. <laughs> Imagine this dude has normal Dev. He probably will. That's the fucking stupid part, but that's why I hope there are, or that's why I wish there were other teams with multiple first round picks, because I want to trade back and kind of do what we did with the Bears trade, but ideally ar around like 10 and then 24 or something like that, because that QB could go early, earlier than his projection. We'll see. I'm definitely going to trade this down, because I'm thinking receiver here. I like Javier Addison. Like, look at those ratings. Those are pretty damn good, but he has 454 speed. Speed. He does have elite acceleration and change of direction, but he's just slow. I don't know. I wish he was faster. I do. There's also Nick Fitzpatrick, who I kind of like. Or no, this isn't the one I like, but he does look good. He's probably better than the guy I like. Where is he? Eric Burke. Good speed, elite acceleration, great change of direction and agility and strength. A awareness, a medium route, catching, short route. The problem is he is deep route, or D deep route and D release. Other than that, other than that though, he looks really good. Definitely gonna have normal dev, but I don't know. We'll, we'll just see what we want to do. We'll trade down to like 10. The Bears have picked 10 and it looked like they were interested. I really hope we do get that QB though. <laughs> That's really the main thing that can mess this up is if we don't get that QB. But we'll do this. We'll trade down to 10. We'll pick up a first next year, a second this year and next year, and a third this year. Didn't we trade our first pick to the Bears last year? I think we did. Took like a 71 overall last year. They go with a corner this year. Okay. <laughs> but let's go with one of the receivers. Who do I like more? Do I like Fitzpatrick? Patrick Moore. What were his combine ratings again? Only solid speed, but elite acceleration, great agility, good strength, good ratings on paper. He could be better, but for some reason, I just like Burke. I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> there isn't a reason. He doesn't look better at all. I'm sure he's going to be worse. Fitzpatrick has like much better release and better deep route. The only thing that's better about Burke is the medium route and maybe the awareness and the speed and the strength. I think they might be similar overalls, honestly. <laughs> Burke's gonna be worse. I don't know why I want to take him. I just do. I'm making weird picks in this rebuild. Normal dev. Yeah. I mean, the last one I thought was bad, and he ended up being one of the best players in the class, so I don't know. And the QB is still here. It's still also doing the thing where it's just automatically skipping us to our next pick, which is something. It kind of makes me scared to close out of this franchise, because sometimes when it does weird stuff, it doesn't save. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll go with Max Sutton here. Let's take him. Hit Hidden Dev, 96 throw power, 95 speed. That's insane. <laughs> and let's see, what else do we need? We could go with like another receiver if I really want to. I don't know if I do, but I guess we could. Trey House looks interesting. Ooh, let's see if they're one of those like crazy 80 something overall guards. Don't think so. Ooh, wait. Rylan Newberry at center could be really good. He He's gonna have C, pass block finesse and run block finesse. But if those were an A, this dude could be like close to an 80 overall we still might take him because he does look really good low-key all these centers look pretty amazing edward bush even looks pretty good either all the centers are terrible or they're all great i don't know oh and jeremy goodwin at defensive end this looks like a much better draft class than last year b awareness a power moves a tackle this dude's probably a first round talent good strength great speed great acceleration i don't know what we're gonna do with him but i might make i might take him with the next pick we'll see yeah this draft class feels a lot better <laughs> I don't know what that last one was. Tavon Jackson looks pretty good too. I might take him. He's a pass coverage.
coverage outside linebacker, which I usually don't like, but he actually has good pursuit and hopefully good tackling. He also has elite speed, elite acceleration, or elite change of direction. I don't know, this is a tough pick. There are a lot of different directions we could go. Even the safeties look pretty good. This guy doesn't look great, but I guess I'm just used to seeing terrible players now from last year. I don't know. Have I mentioned that last year's draft was bad enough times? I mean, I, I'll probably mention it about 10 more throughout the rebuild. I might go with one of the centers. Do we really need center though? I mean, our O-line is maybe good. Because there are a lot of good players, let's just go with our biggest need. Our O-line definitely still isn't great. We also do need D-line still and linebacker. We need almost everything. It's tough. There isn't anyone that looks insane, but there are a lot of players that look good. You know what I mean? I might just go with one of the centers because our offensive line overall still isn't good. I think we'll go with Ryland Newberry. He looks pretty good. Hidden dev, 90 strength, 82 excel. Sure. Now let's go with the defensive end that looked interesting. Jeremy Goodwin. This guy's also interesting, but he's not guaranteed to have a power move, so I'm going to stay away from that. We'll go with Jeremy Goodwin. Y'all have seen him. Might have normal dev, but I think he'll be a good overall, so let's take him. He does have hidden 86 strength, 83 speed, 87 excel. We'll take that. But I'll make a few more picks, and we will see how we did this year. But here's how we did in the draft. Eric Burke is a 78. That wasn't necessarily a miss. Just no dev trait. That, that sucks. Hopefully he can get one. He'll be our number one receiver this year. We'll see. I guess the, the 69 deep route and 71 release just hold him back. Well, no, the overall isn't the problem. It's just the dev trait. That sucks. But he looks good. But Max Sutton is a 79 overall hidden dev. Only 22 years old. Not a great scheme fit, but 96 throw power, 86 throw on the run. Honestly, other than that, none of his like passing stats are too insane, just well-rounded, but 95 speed, 91 excel, 87 change of direction. Oh, I thought that said 81 trucking, 81 toughness, 86 juke move. This would be like maybe the most fun user quarterback ever. And Ryland Newberry, he's good. 75 overall, very much not a scheme fit, but <laughs> hidden dev, he looks good. Jeremy Goodwin was a 76 at defensive end, so that was a good pick. Or was he a 75? Yeah, 75. Only a 72 at outside linebacker, which sucks, but he has a dev trait. It'll be fine. Tavon Jackson, hidden dev, 73 overall. He's good. What was my last pick? It was Hayward. Sebastian Gomez, he is better than I thought. Hidden dev, 76 overall. He's almost better than the receiver we took top 10, just because he has the dev trait. And then Ralph Hayward, I just took him because he had like four elite traits. He's absolutely terrible in coverage. We'd almost be better off just moving him to like receiver or something. He's like just an athlete. No, that makes me curious though. Would he be better at a different position? He's honestly not that bad of an outside linebacker. 66. I thought he would go down way more. 71 at safety. A 60 at running back. I mean, that's not good, but from switching or for switching from offense to defense or defense to offense, that's interesting. We'll just leave him at corner. Did I take Gamble? I don't think I did. Rashawn Gamble, he looks good. 74 overall hidden dev. No 80 overalls in this draft, but a lot of good players. I want to see where did our guys rank in the draft? This was definitely a better one than last year. It didn't have Sutton as a top five player. It has him listed as one here. I guess it's maybe not how that works, but he's tied for a top five player in the class. Was Fitzpatrick the other receiver I was thinking of? Of course he would have hidden dev. They're literally the same overall, but we just happened to pick the one that doesn't have a dev trait. I hate this game. <laughs> Skill issue, I guess. I guess I should have known. But yeah, definitely a good draft. And let's get into year three. But here's a look at the team heading into year three. Almost an 80 overall now. We're looking really really good. A ton of rookies and just young players in general starting on offense. Really, our only old player is Garrett Bowles, but we I just pressed B somehow. If there's a position that we're going to be old at, but good, I'm fine with that being left tackle. Now, will he play well? I don't know, but he has over the last couple years, so we'll see. And we'll see. I'm fucking tripping. I thought I heard something outside my window. <laughs> we'll see how Max Sutton does as a rookie. He's only six feet tall. I, I just noticed that. That's something. He's an interesting player. Probably the most interesting quarterback I've ever taken. I think that's safe to say. I'm gonna be depressed when he massively underperforms this year. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully he does well. The receiving core is looking better. Everything is looking better. The defense isn't, like, super different from last year, but we did add Trayvon Merrig, Jackson, Goodwin. I signed Carl Brooks. He was just chilling as a free agent, so why not? He was an upgrade. I still need to address this D-line. We only really have one good defensive lineman in Mallard, and we still probably need another corner, because Riley Moss is 25 now. He's not really going to develop a whole lot more because EA. And we probably still need another safety, although I guess he 
you never know, Eli Ricks could have a massive breakout, but other than that, this defense is looking pretty good. Couple superstars, lots of stars, only two starters that don't have a dev trait. So I'm really interested interested to see how this team does. Let's get to the midseason point, and hopefully we have more than one win. I'll understand if we're doing bad, because we don't have a great roster on paper, but I wish this game would do for me what it does for other teams in simulation. Okay, well, here we are at the midseason. We are, we are two and five, <laughs> which is about what I expected. I should have predicted that. We are last in the division by a decent amount. I mean, every other team in the division has a winning record, which is fine, because we don't even have an 80 overall team yet, but again, I want to say, why can't this game do for me what I've seen it do for other, other teams? <laughs> I've seen terrible teams in the Super Bowl and win them and beat us in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, and by the way, Max Sutton has superstar dev. I saw that when I was spending an upgrade on him. That's huge. He's up to 97 throw power now. We already got a throw power upgrade. That's crazy. I mean, he, <laughs> if you think about it, if he gets lucky, he could be up to 97 throw power and, or uh, 99 throw power and 99 speed by the end of this. We'll see. That would be insane, but it could happen. Let's see. Jackson has superstar. Goodwin, I thought for sure he would have superstar. He only has star, but that's fine. It was still a really good value pick. And then Newberry only has star, which is fine. And Gomez probably only has star because he's, well, he's almost gone up too, but that's probably just star, but that's fine. Maybe we can bounce back in the second half of the year as this team develops more. It said we were up to an 80 overall. It doesn't say it there, but it says 80 overall there. So we'll just have to see what happens. Even if we don't make the playoffs, that's fine. This can be a year four or five rebuild, but let's, er, do we have re-signings? I almost forgot about re-signings. I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, we do. Okay. <laughs> Emmanuel Forbes, who's actually developed into a good player here. He's an 81 overall. How's Evan Neal doing? Last year, I think he was pretty decent. I mean, we'll probably replace him either way. Oh, shit. Zero sacks allowed? That's how you know Madden isn't realistic. I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved Evan Neal as a prospect, but he has been so bad in the NFL. It is unbelievable. Thank God the Giants have a new offensive line coach, but Evan Neal has looked so bad. Like, the Giants have drafted good offensive linemen. John Michael Schmitz, Evan Neal were two prospects I really liked. Mark Glowinski was good for the Colts, has been bad for them. Andrew Thomas actually has worked out, but he's the the, the outlier. So it looks like we're kind of saving Evan Neal's career here. But we'll re-sign Emmanuel Forbes. We'll go six years, 52 mil. That's really cheap. He takes it. That's a long deal, but it's cheap. And then Evan Neal will go another really cheap deal, two years, 7.6 mil, and he takes it. And then everyone else is mostly just backups. I mean, Carl Brooks is a starter, but he's replaceable. Same with Byron Young. But let's get to the end of the season, and we will see how we finish. We might not win another game. We could technically make the playoffs. We'll just see. Okay, well, it is the first option. We almost don't win another game. We finish 4-13. and 13. Great. Cool. The Commanders go 15-2. and two. The Commanders are... The Commanders are almost going undefeated before we even have a winning record. I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised. We're not the best roster in the world yet, but still, that's just... That's that's sad. Gomez only has star. That's fine. We are, Oh, I guess we hit two, stoop, two superstars this year, but those are our first superstar devs of the rebuild. I mean, we have Alexander, but he was a normal dev that happened to get defensive rookie of the year. Maybe we'll have some dev ups this year. I don't know. Let's check the stats. Ooh, Max Sutton is a rookie. Okay, a lot. Ooh, oof. He's not going to win rookie of the year, but 4,200 yards, 32 touchdowns, 65% completion percentage. That sounds good, right? 21 interceptions. Not great. <laughs> Only sacked 18 times too. Why is this offensive line good? I mean, it, it's a pretty good overall. I always make this comparison though. I've had like 90 overall average offensive lines that allow 50 sacks because EA. Chuba Hubbard was kind of kind of cheeks. 800 yards, only 3.6 per carry. Can we get a good running back, please? Do we need to move Sutton to running back? He actually had 4.4 per carry. I mean, that's different because he was running when he saw wide open lanes. Hubbard was running into not wide open lanes most of the time, but still. Oh, and Eric Burke. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get cucked, aren't we? He did really well. 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Almost 1,000 yards for Parker Washington, too. 11 touchdowns. Russell, 888 yards, only three touchdowns. Gomez was mid. Garrett Bowles was our worst lineman, but honestly, not even that bad. Well, maybe Newberry. Newberry was kind of bad. Five sacks allowed from center. Widmer and Belfer only allowed one sack, though. They were both great. Trenton Simpson had 168 tackles. He was like our only tackle getter. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude's racked up like 500 tackles in three years. No, wait, like legitimately, that's probably close to 500. Maybe like 440 something? That was a pretty good guess. 449.
nine. I don't know how he's not sore or something. That, <laughs> that probably doesn't feel good. But tackles for loss, 17 for Mallard, and then that's mostly it in sacks. Really not many. Five and a half for Alexander, four and a half for Mallard, only two and a half for Goodwin as a rookie, even though he was like a 70. I guess he was only a 72 at outside linebacker, but he's up to a 75. I don't know. I saw our defense did bad, so. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to change the playbooks. Like I've said, I've seen this Giants team win Super Bowls and become a borderline dynasty in franchise when we do a fantasy draft. So we're going to keep the defensive playbooks, at least. The offense was really bad, but the defense we'll see. But Emmanuel Forbes, three picks, two for Simpson. Simpson and Ricks, and then one for four players, including Von Alexander. Cool. But yearly awards MVP goes to Trevor Lawrence again. He's becoming the MVP winner here. The commanders have CJ Stroud. I saw that earlier. That's something. Mac Jones up there again. The Ravens also have Nick Chubb. What a backfield. We had uh, Anthony Richardson and Nick Chubb in a recent rebuild. This is just that, but better. Garrett Wilson stayed on the Jets, it looks like. What team are we? Why can I not think of what team we are? We're the Giants. No Giants up here. Defensive player the year goes to Chris Jones. No Giants. I'm checking the... Hey, holy shit, dude. I need to wake up. <laughs> NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Saquon Barkley. NFC Defensive Player of the Year goes to Max Crosby on the Packers. Trenton Simpson at number seven. I kind of thought he could be higher just because tackle numbers. Offensive Rookie of the Year does go to Eric Burke, though. Max Sutton at number two. Gomez at number seven. Gamble at number 10, too. We had four rookies up there. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Marcus Faro or Faro, whatever, for the... Uh, Falcons. I almost called them the Titans. Hayward at number four. Jackson at number six. Goodwin at number eight. Okay, that was a good rookie class. They were good players and a lot of them performed well. Now, some of them didn't, <laughs> but most of them did. But let's get into the offseason, potentially heading into the final year. And no matter what, we're going to finally make this team good. Whether we need to sign free agents, if there aren't any free agents, we'll make trades. We'll just see what we got to do. It's not going to be an amazing team, but it could be, depending on who's available in free agency. It really could be. Oh, and question of the day. Ooh, I got a good one. I, one I'm surprised I haven't asked yet. So let me know down in the comments, who do you think is going to be a breakout player heading into the year? I'm kind of liking uh, Christian Gonzalez for the Patriots. He was really good last year before he got injured. There are so many different answers I could give, but <laughs> that's the first one that came to mind. You can answer one for your favorite team, whatever, just whoever you think is going to have a breakout season this year, and you can come back to this comment and see if you were right or wrong or whatever happened. I don't think you'll remember, but if you do, you can call it now in the comments. My guess is Christian Gonzalez. I'm sorry, Patriots fans, when he inevitably sucks this year, just gets hurt again. I, I apologize, but that's my prediction. If I want to be biased towards the Seahawks, I'll probably say like Christian or not uh, Colby Parkinson or something because he'll get a bigger role. Probably he might go to another team. I don't know, <laughs> but he's pretty good. Same with JSN. He might have a breakout. We'll see. Oh, great. The commanders win a Super Bowl. They beat the Ravens 28 to 21 in Super Bowl 60. That's that's sure something. Wish that could be us. But we get an upgrade for Eric Burke. I'm hoping he, you know, at least got star dev. Maybe deserves superstar because he was so good, but he does get superstar. Okay, that's huge. We'll definitely take that. Plus star dev, plus superstar dev for offensive rookie of the year. This team's kind of shaping up finally. But let's see, did we hit any other dev ups? I, I bet Trenton Simpson went up to X Factor because he got so many tackles. Uh, uh, none on offense, no other dev ups on offense, but on defense, yeah, Trenton Simpson did go up to X Factor, but I think that was it. Or no, Hayward got star. Ooh, that's interesting. I mean, he's only, oh, I thought he was 21 last year. He's 23 now. I mean, we still might get another, uh, a different corner, but that's still something. <laughs> I guess that's better than not having any dev ups on defense at all, other than Simpson. But let's see who we are gonna have to re sign this year. I can't remember who else we have. <laughs> I think it was just one other player, right? Or no, did we get everyone back? We might have got everyone back because it was just Neil and uh, Emmanuel Forbes. Yeah, I'm I'm good on letting everyone else here go. It's just a bunch of backups. Most of them aren't interested. I guess I'll resign the punter if he wants to, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, I guess not. Whatever, I'll tag him. <laughs> but let's see who we want to add in free agency or who we can add. I just hope there are good players this year. I don't think there are gonna be. Uh, okay. I mean, there are okay players here. Corey Lindsley's still here. He's probably gonna retire in real life, but he's still here like three or four years in the future. God, is there anyone at all I want here? <laughs> I definitely want a running back. It's just there hasn't been one available that actually just does well in this game. As I always say, overall and performance in this game are two different things for some reason. It's so stupid, but that's just how it is. We could get Austin Eckler. He's still good. I mean, 
<laughs> Definitely wasn't great in real life this year, but in the game, he's still good. Still an 82 overall. I mean, we can just kind of burn through money this year because this might be the last season. Calvin Ridley, that would be interesting, but I don't know if he would have a role. He's also 31, but I guess that doesn't really matter. I mean, he might have a role. <sighs> I might do that. We'll see. Well, we definitely need D lineman at the very least and probably a safety. We'll worry about that first. All right. Well, we are going to go for like any little upgrade we can manage to get. We can't go for any of the like big name players like Zadarius Smith, Christian Wilkins. They're just not interested and they have like full green five star offers or whatever you want to call them. So we just can't compete with those. And believe me, I tried. I upped their deals like crazy and it still only got us to it still didn't even get us to a full offer. So that's tough. We were offering like <laughs> Christian Wilkins. I think it was almost 40 mil per year and it was still not a green offer. So that's cool. Or it was green, but you know what I mean? Not a full offer, but we're going to go for ca Here's the thing. We're making a lot of offers. There are like two players we actually have a lead for. We're going for Calvin Ridley. We're tied with two teams. He's going to go to the commanders for Thibodeau. We're tied with three teams. He's, I don't know who he's going to go to, but probably not us. Javon Hargrave. We're tied with three teams. He'll probably go to the commanders or the Eagles or something. Austin Eck we actually have a lead for. Leonard Williams, we actually have a lead for, but he might reject us still. Jaquan McMillan, he'll probably go to the Titans. Sidney Brown, we should get. I'm super, I'm not a pessimist at all. <laughs> I want all these players. They would all be upgrades. None of them would be like insane upgrades or anything. I guess Leonard Williams would be like a 10 overall upgrade or over whatever we have there, but I just want to make whatever upgrades we can this year. So let's see how many of these players sign. I think we'll get four out of these seven players, maybe only three. Let's see. Literally everybody signs. Oh, and we get Thibodeau, Hargrave, Eckler, Williams, McMillan, and Brown. The only player we didn't get was Calvin Ridley, but that's fine. I don't really care. We could maybe go for Jacoby Myers, but he has more offers now. He'll probably have a green offer. No, he doesn't. I don't think we'll get him, but I guess we can try. But hey, that went a lot better than I expect. Definitely not a great free agent class, but we got some players. Jacoby Myers, do you want to sign though? No, he doesn't. That's fine. I don't care. I might draft a receiver. We'll see. But speaking of that, let's get to the draft and we'll see what we want to do. I don't even know because I focus scouted D-line, but now we have Mallard, Hargrave, and Williams. We definitely don't need D-line anymore. Let's see what we want to do. And like I said, we are going to make a trade. We are going to be... <laughs> We're going to be sending the 13th pick for George Kittle. Maybe I could have tried less than this, but I just figured this wouldn't even do it. I don't really care, though. I still think it's worth it for us. Definitely. Because we're running the Chiefs offensive playbook. We're going to the tight end a lot. And the guy we had was decent, but he was only like a 78 overall. We're going to go with George Kittle instead. <laughs> I think that's a little bit of an upgrade, like a 20 overall upgrade. And we still have a first round pick that I don't know what we're going to do with. Absolutely make this makes this offense look a million times better better though. I still feel like we're lacking studs on defense. I mean, our highest overall guy is, I guess, Alexander at an 83. Do I want to do another trade? I don't know. We could. What is the, the Vikings safety group is insane. Jesse Bates and Buda Baker. That's crazy. And they have Devin Witherspoon at corner. Jack Jones at an 84 with superstar. That's a secondary. That's probably the worst performing secondary in the league because it's a good overall. And this is going to be the last trade of the rebuild. This is a goofy one. We're trading both of our second round picks for Antoine Winfield Jr., a third and a fourth this year. So we're trading back two of our picks pretty far. One of our seconds is almost a first. It's like pick 35. And we're picking up Antoine Winfield Jr. So we're having to do some things, but it's it's definitely making this team better. And now let's see what we want to do in the draft. We're just going to take the best player I can find. All right. Again, it skipped us right to our pick. That's so weird. But we pick at number three. Oh, Oh, the corner's gone. He went number one overall. It, there was a really good looking corner here. There are still some good looking corners. Oh my God. Justin Galloway or Galloway, whatever. A man, B zone, elite speed, great acceleration, possibly a awareness in play rec. I mean, I doubt it. Usually the play rec is lower. It's really hard to find corners with a play rec. God, even Isaiah Barlow looks crazy. Great speed, elite acceleration. We don't really need a corner, but even in the second round, Randy Roberts, good speed, great acceleration. 
Elimination, Elite Change of Direction, Great Jumping, A-Man, B-Zone. Not as good of awareness in Play Rec, but he's still probably like a 78 or something. Look, even these guys down here, third to fourth round. Okay, that's kind of where it stops a little bit, but Chris Samuel could be decent. Danny Barner, ooh. I do like slot corners later on in the draft. Eh, he's only solid for like everything at the Combine, but still, B-Man, he's probably good. But let's go, I think we're gonna go with a receiver, depending on these guys' speed. I haven't checked their speed yet, but Sean Hart, good speed, great acceleration. Again, I <laughs> we saw a receiver that had like a 4-3-4 and a 4-3-9, and that was only good speed and was it solid acceleration or something? This guy ran a 4-4-9 and a 4-5, and it's good speed and great acceleration. I love this game, but he looks really, really good. The catching isn't great, but that's it. And then J.R. Fowler, oh my god. <laughs> okay, I like Hart more, but Fowler has better medium route and catch in traffic. They both have the same catching, but the reason I like Hart more is because good speed, great acceleration, elite jumping. Fowler has only solid speed, solid acceleration. He does have elite jumping, though. He's faster at the combine, but he's also not faster because EA. He might be better, honestly, because of the medium route. Medium route kind of carries sometimes. I just know whichever player I pick is gonna have normal dev, but we'll go with Sean Hart out of Miami. Okay, no, he does have hidden 91 speed, 94 jumping, 92 excel, 78 strength. That's not elite? What's elite strength? Is it like 80 for a receiver? That's insane. But now in the third round, skipped right to our pick for us again. That's throwing me off because I'm almost simulating past it. Let's see, I do want a corner and there are a couple really good looking ones left. Del Berry, what's your speed? Good speed, good excel, elite jumping. I wish I knew what his man was. And then Danny Hayden. Oh, okay. He's going to be the pick. Uh, <laughs> elite acceleration, elite agility, only solid change of direction. That's fine. Great speed. Ran a 4-3-2, 4-3-1 at his pro day. He has B-zone, B-press, and he's listed as a man corner, so at least B-man, possibly A. Uh, yeah, we'll take that. Only normal dev, that's fine, but I'm kind of surprised about that. I feel like second round corners, like early second, late first, usually have normal dev a lot of the time, but once you get past that point, like into the third round, I feel like a lot of the corners do have good dev traits, but either way, that's fine. Still probably a really good overall. And let's see, probably the last pick of this rebuild what are we gonna do? Well, we might go to a year five. We'll, we'll just see how this year goes. Oh, I didn't mean to go to tight end. I thought these were receiver number or receiver stats. I was confused. I thought that was just an insane receiver class. Why am I looking at tight ends? That's like the last thing we need. <laughs> Let's see. John Smith looks pretty damn good. So does Desmond House. We don't need another receiver though. I don't know. I just don't know what to do with this pick. I mean, if we're going overalls based, we definitely need a right tackle, but Evan Neal's been so good, so... I don't want to replace him. I'm just worried his his overalls eventually gonna matter, but it hasn't so far. Ooh, what does Phil Mc McCarron look like? Ooh, really good combine. Not the best power. I don't know. I just feel like going a line going with a lineman. I feel like I need to take one lineman per draft. It used to be kind of a kind of a meme on the channel, I guess. Mostly, I would just say it. I, I don't think anyone reciprocated it, but I I just said it. Hayden Hunt looks really good. Same with Ramon Calloway. There's some good left guards. And let's see, I focus. My focus position was defensive tackle. There's Nolan Royal, Cameron Winston. Both of them are first to second round talents. Cole Pitts looks pretty good as a UDFA. Ooh, Nolan Royal is only 20 years old. Holy. Okay, I think he's going to be the pick. He has 478 speed. Defensive tackles are way too fast in this game. Like, there are five Kalijah Kansies per draft. That's something we've seen like twice ever in real life. But he has elite speed, elite jumping, elite acceleration, good strength. Everything is at least good. We'll take him. Hidden dev. I would have been fine even if he had normal dev because he is only 20. I don't know what we're going to do with him, but if we can get a good player, why not? And let's see, last, the actual last pick. Let's, let's go with one of the guards. Do I like Hunt or Callaway more? I don't know. It's tough to say. I think I'll go with Hunt because he had a better combine, but it's close. I might end up going with both if Callaway is still available, but let's go with Layden Hunt. Hidden dev, 89 strength. Cool. But let's get to the draft recap and we will see how we did this year. This draft felt pretty good. Oh, okay. Well, this might have been another terrible draft class. Why? We like alternate between good ones and just terrible draft classes. Unless I'm bad. Maybe I'm just bad. I don't know. Okay. Maybe I'm just bad. There were good players here. <laughs> That's tough. God, Isaiah Barlow was really good. I should have taken him. Justin Galloway was good. The receiver wasn't that good that we took. Fowler was better. Really? What was wrong with the receiver we took? What did I miss there? I uh, don't know. Why was the other guy better? 
better. What? Does medium route just carry that much? No, wait, actually, let me see. Okay, Sean Hart has 80, or no, not 80. 79 medium route. Fowler, okay, well, it's 80. Oh, he has 95 spec catch. Okay, that'll do it. See, I mean, that's that's why I wish there were A pluses, because his A spec catch, or his 95 spec catch, and Hart's 86 spec catch both just showed up as A's, so there wasn't really any way for me to know one was a million times better than the other. Skill issue, I guess. I don't know. Hayden isn't as good as I thought he would be either. Royals, good. Hunt is nowhere near as good as I expect. Callaway's, I thought he would be a 75. I also took Benford and Dotson. That was a bad draft class. That was not good, like straight up. And there were good players. That's, that's tough. I'll take the L on that one, even though I feel like that was stupid. I mean, well, it wasn't a bad draft class. I mean, if you compare it to this one, it was a million times better. If you compare it to this one, it was a million times better. If you compare it to this one, it was a million times better, but it's still, oh, what did the Broncos do? <laughs> I still thought we got better players than we did. Oh, what did the Chargers do? <laughs> okay, maybe our draft class wasn't that bad, comparing it to other ones. And the Eagles. How do you have like eight picks and you do this? But let's get into what is probably the final year of the rebuild and let's get a look at the team. Okay, well, we are looking pretty good. Again, this might go to a year five, depending on how I'm feeling, how much more I'm feeling like playing this game today. <laughs> I, I might do a year five anyways, we'll see. But we have an 83 offense, 85 defense. We were an 84, I guess we just lost morale, which is tough. I mean, we still have some positive morale, but not as much, I don't know. But we should be able to work back to an 84 pretty quickly throughout the year. The team isn't as young as it used to be, obviously. I mean, we added Leonard Williams, Javon Hargrave, Antoine Winfield, George Kittle, Austin Eckler, but it's it's better now. So we'll see how we do. We have better dev traits than last year, like Burke, Simpson, I guess that's it, but <laughs> a couple at least. And hopefully Austin Eckler does better than Chuba Hubbard did. I mean, that's really the big thing. The run game is so important in this game, which is why it's extra stupid that some good overall running backs just play like shit. Honestly, that's it sucks. It does. But what else is new? But let's just get straight to the end of year number four and let's see what happens. But here we are at the end of year number four. And before I reveal how we did in year four, if you haven't already, I would very much appreciate it if you leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel in the video. And if we can hit 2,500 likes, like I said, I have something similar to this planned. Or well, I guess I don't have something planned, but I will do something similar to this. Whatever y'all want to see. So let me know what you would want to see down in the comments. Any extreme fantasy draft challenges similar to this. And also, like I said, subscribe for more. I'm trying to hit 50k within the next couple days. We've been growing insanely quick lately. And if you like man rebuilds and this video, then pretty much all my videos are like this. So you should like the rest of them. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, and last thing. I always forget to plug this at the beginning of videos, but be sure to turn on notifications if you want to be one of the first people to ever see these videos and make sure that you never miss them, assuming YouTube actually gives you the notification. And anytime I, I plug notifications, it seems like a lot of people do it, so be sure to do it. I would appreciate it if you want to. But in year number four, we finished seven and ten, and we once again missed the playoffs. We're gonna be doing a year five. I feel like that goes without saying. We had the worst or second worst run D in the league. I mean, I guess that's maybe valid. We have really undersized linebackers, but it's not like Madden would have that logic. I don't think that played a role. I think that's just the game being stupid. Do we change the defensive playbook? I think we might. I mean... <laughs> But let's see, we have an 87 overall defense, just because I always do this in rebuilds. Where where does that rank in the league, and where does our team overall rank in the league? So let's see, team overall, we're an 87, so we're tied with the Saints and the Raiders. Um, and the, well, that's us, never mind, I'm stupid. And the Dolphins and the Cowboys and the Cardinals and the Buccaneers. Okay, the Browns are the best roster, but we're tied for second <laughs> in the league, and we went 7-10. and 10. Defensively, we're not, like, super high up, I guess. I thought we would be higher, but, like, there are some teams with 81 overall defenses and they were probably better than us. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I know these playbooks work well. That's why I don't want to change the defensive one at least. The offensive one sucked. That was terrible to begin with. Let's check out the season stats. We'll go one more year, like I said. 4,200 yards for Sutton, 36 touchdowns, only eight picks, 71% completion percentage. He was definitely not the problem. Austin Eckler was pretty bad though. <laughs> Less than 900 yards, only 3.6 per carry. We know that number too well. Seven touchdowns. Eric Burke though, almost 13 
1,300 yards and 19 touchdowns. Damn, he's up to an 86, 88 with morale. I'm guessing he'll go up to X Factor, probably. George Kittle had 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns. Sean Hart as a rookie was decent. Blocking, Evan Neal wasn't great, but the rest of the line was. I guess Widmer technically wasn't great because right guards usually allow the least sacks, but he still wasn't terrible. Trent Simpson adds um, even more tackles to his resume, I guess. 153 tackles for loss, 13 for Hargrave, 12 for Alexander and Williams. 11 for Thibodeau. And yeah, we're going to change the defensive playbook. We had seven and, a half, seven and a half sacks from Vaughn Alexander, four and a half for Mallard. We had three and a half from Javon Hargrave, three and a half from Kayvon Thibodeau, two for Leonard Williams, two for... Yeah, we're changing the defensive playbook. Uh, <laughs> interceptions, we had three for Tavon Jackson and then one for five players. I love this game. MVP goes to Trevor Lawrence again. Okay, can we have someone different win it? Max Sutton up there at number five. I mean, I wouldn't complain if he won it. Offensive player of the year goes to Puka Nakua, Eric Burkett, number Number two, why? Okay, we had to get cucked at least once in the rebuild. I can't remember if we already have, but it had to happen at least once. Defensive player of the year goes to Josh Allen on the Lions. That's different, at least. We we get cucked again. Mike Parks, offensive rookie of the year for the Panthers. Sean Hart at number two. That's great. I feel like this game fucks with me. Like, I know it doesn't, obviously, but I I I don't know, man. I don't know. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to another Panther, Drew Tatum. Danny Hayden at number nine. That was definitely a season. What defensive playbook do we want to run, though? I don't even know what a good 3-4 defense is, honestly. I feel like whenever I use them, they, they do poorly anyways, but... We can go Buccaneers. I mean, Buccaneers used to be my go-to. It's not very good anymore, though. But it looks like it was good here. My go-to now is kind of the Rams. It's very, very hit or miss, but sometimes it is good. Should we try the Bucs? That's such a weird one. Like, I asked what a good 3-4 defensive playbook is. I don't think a single person answered the Buccaneers. But it, like I said, it used to be my go-to. It used to work really well, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> this game breaks me the more I play it. I mean, our defense wasn't terrible. It's just... It, it kind of was at the same time. I don't know. Let's go with... Fuck it. We'll, we'll be ballsy here. We'll try something different. We'll go with the Buccaneers, which is, I know, probably a weird pick. People are going to question it. I'm sure. We'll try it, though. We'll try something different. So we will see how that works. We're not a very good 3-4 or base 3-4 scheme fit. Well, we should be once we move everything around. All right. We'll see how that goes. We definitely, for a 3-4, we have massively undersized linebackers. But like I said, that doesn't really matter in this game because it's not realistic. Size absolutely should matter in overall, though. I don't know why it doesn't. It's interesting because like think about it if there's a maxed out or let's just say like an 80 overall player There's one that's let's say for a receiver There's one that's 6'5 230 and there's one that's like 5'8 170 both have the exact same ratings across the board But I think you're taking the one who's 6'5 230 or whatever I said but in Madden They're exactly the same not in gameplay But I guess in simulation and in terms of overall, I don't know. That's just it's interesting I've thought about that before I haven't thought about that in a while, but just our linebackers made me think of that. I don't know. I'm yapping a lot in this rebuild. Yet another complaint I have about this game. Add it to the pile of about 50 million. But in the Super Bowl, the Packers beat the Texans 21 to 16. That's something that could happen in the near future. I mean, both of those teams are looking up for the future. That's an interesting one. Hello? Why can't I? Okay. I pressed Y about 40 times and it finally worked. We unfortunately regressed. Did we have any retirements? That would suck if Garrett Bowles retired. Okay, he didn't. Why do we... Why'd we regress so bad? I guess George Kittle regressed a little bit, but for dev ups, for dev trade increases, Sutton hit X Factor. That's crazy. Didn't get any overall upgrades, but does it say why he hit X Factor? No, but we'll take it. I think it's like 35 plus touchdowns is an automatic dev increase. I feel like it should be only 30. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know how many quarterbacks even hit 30 in real life this year. I know it was a down year, but still. Anyways, Burke also went up to X Factor, so that's huge. Again, no, no upgrades, which is tough, but whatever. And on defense, no dev increases, but Nolan Royal does have superstar. Now, I don't know what we're going to do with him, but he does have superstar. So I guess that's worth something. Oh, Javon Hargrave regressed kind of hard. He went down four overall, but let's let's see who we have to re-sign. So at the midseason, I did re-sign. No, I tried to re-sign Antoine Winfield Jr., but I think he rejected us. Or no, he took it. Okay. So I re-signed him. We'll have these fifth years. I mean, this doesn't matter, but I guess I'll pick him up. I won't pick up the one for Russell because he's a backup, but I will try to re-sign Garrett Bowles. I don't think he's going to re-sign. Just kidding, he does. Okay, cool. And Terry Parker, do you want to sign now? Just so I don't have to... Okay, cool. So that's about it. We'll let all these guys go and hopefully, 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 there are some
some good free agents this year. Please. I'm I'm begging. I'm on my hands and knees. Not actually, but okay. There are at least a couple good players. There are a few. Okay. <laughs> Finally. And I think we're going to be signing our like third running back of the rebuild. What did that say? I thought 2023 said 2028 for some reason. I was like, how long have I been doing this? But no, we'll try to re-sign Damian Harris or try to sign Damian Harris. He's good in this game. And I definitely want to right tackle. How does Brayden Smith do in this game? I feel like I remember him doing terribly. He hasn't been great. <laughs> how has Zach Tom done? I get Zach Tom so much though. He does do well though. Okay, can we get Brayden Smith? If we can't get Brayden Smith, then I'll go with Zach Tom. Okay, we can get Brayden Smith. Vita Vea is also here. I don't think we'll be able to get him, but we might as well try. And let me restructure some deals. We'll we'll free up a little more money and try to go for some more players. This team's gonna be really good by the end of this, one way or another. <laughs> We're gonna get it good. I mean, it is already good, but I don't know. We have to make it extremely good for it to even do decently well. Put me out of my misery. Okay, well, we were kind of able to free up like a ridiculous amount of money, like 60 mil or something. It might have been more. It might have been 70. I don't know, but we are going for some players. We are going for pretty much every good player that's available. We're going to go for Vita Vea, Wyatt Teller, Braden Smith, DJ Reed, Damian Harris, and DJ Reader. Oh, great. We had both Byron Youngs. Now we're going to have DJ Reed and DJ Reader. Cool. I don't know how many of these guys we're going to get. I think for sure we're going to get these four. Don't think we're going to get either of these two, though. Maybe one, but I I don't know. Let's see who wants to sign. Okay, Braden Smith doesn't sign. Maybe we won't get him, but we do get literally everybody else. We get Vita Vea, Wyatt Teller, DJ Reed, Damian Harris, and DJ Reader. Braden Smith doesn't sign, though. I kind of had that feeling for some reason. I was, like, questioning it when I said, I think we'll get Braden Smith or whatever I said. I don't remember already. Should we just go with old reliable Zach Tom, my goat, my king? Oh, we barely have the lead for him. Um, <laughs> this could be a risk. Now, we'll, what should I do? We'll go for Zach Tom. We'll, we'll try that. Does he want to sign? Okay, he does. Cool. So yet another massive free agent class, but will it matter <laughs> literally at all? I guess we'll have to find out. Let's get to the draft. God, we have so many D linemen. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> we didn't really need to sign DJ Reader, but I guess it doesn't hurt. But I also made it my focus position again. So I, I don't know what we're going to do in the draft. We'll do something. But we pick at number nine this year. I don't know what we're going to do with this pick, honestly. <laughs> there wasn't really anyone that looked that good. I feel like I've done too many crazy trades, though, so I don't know if I want to trade this pick away. There aren't really any that good of receivers. I mean, Barry Hill, eh, he doesn't look that good. Ooh, Wheeler actually looks pretty decent. What's his speed? Great speed, great excel. He looks pretty good, but we're not going to take him here, obviously. And he doesn't look great, but he looks pretty good. I don't know. Maybe we should trade this pick away. I mean, we should trade this pick away. That's what we should do. But do I want to? <laughs> we have Felix Hickson. I mean, he looks good, but do we really need him? I don't think he would get much playing time at all. Okay, do we have pick nine or pick 10? Now it says pick 10. That's another weird glitch. It says we have pick nine there, but when we go here in the top left, it says round one, pick 10, New York Giants. I don't know. Another certified EA moment. About 10 million, the 10 millionth one of the rebuild. God, we might trade this pick away. There just isn't really anyone I'm crazy about, honestly. Jamal Virgil looks pretty good. Well, eh, he has B to D power moves. He does have good play rec, which is a good stat to have. There are a lot of power rushing outside line backers. Are any of them good? Austin Alden looks pretty good. Same with Hugh Ryans. Keldon Bates looks okay. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll trade for something. Probably a pass rusher. We have had no pass rush despite having good overall players. Again, thanks EA. Ooh, the Jags. I mean, maybe they lost someone that was good, but what the hell? Oh god, I have, <laughs> I have bad memories with Rashawn Gary, but he was the NFL sacks leader. Oh boy. Oh, we can't afford it. It'll put us over the salary cap. Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, maybe there's a player we can trade that'll get us out of the salary cap, but <laughs> this could be a good thing. Maybe we shouldn't trade for him. Okay, yeah, we don't have the money. Josh Allen? Oh, we definitely don't have the money for him. God, maybe we can't trade for one. <laughs> Trey Hendrickson, I don't know about him as a 3-4 outside linebacker. Yeah, that's tough. We're gonna have to take this pick. Do I just go with Felix Hinton? I don't know if he's great, but honestly, I don't see anyone here that looks great. Terrence Pettis could be good, but we would have to move him to outside linebacker and he'll go down. And even then, he doesn't look insane. 
saying, huh, I know this isn't gonna be a good pick on paper, but <laughs> let's go, I think, with Felix Hickson. Elite speed and acceleration, but he has great strength too, but his jumping, change of direction, and agility aren't that good. Most of his actual ratings are good. His skills, I guess you would call them, core attributes, whatever, but let's just take him. He does have hidden, 86 speed, 80 strength, 90 excel, okay. Hey, that might not be bad. I don't know how he's gonna perform, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. <laughs> Tucker, I thought that dude was dead ass named Tucker Carlson. That would have been fucking insane. Ooh, okay, there's some good defensive tackles. Honestly, there's this first round talent guy, but I kind of like Otis Matthew. What's his combine look like? Good. Alani Waters, he looks good. Quincy Milner, ooh. Okay, he might be the best out of the group. What's he listed as? Run stopper. I like the B finesse moves, but it's probably only like a 70. <laughs> That's the thing. His p finesse moves and power moves are probably the same or really similar. I don't know though. He, he doesn't look bad. What does Tyler Evans look like? Tyler Ninja Blevins. He has D pursuit. Okay, that's not great. Well, if he's a first round talent, Milner looks a lot better. Am I really going to take our like seventh defensive tackle? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else we're going to do. The corners look pretty good, but not great. The receivers look pretty good, but not great. What does Caleb Tyson look like? I mean, he'll probably be available in the next round anyways. He has elite change of direction and acceleration. Okay, he looks good. We'll take him round three, but <laughs> let's go with another defensive tackle. He's probably going to be bad. He really doesn't look that good. I don't know why I'm going to take him. He looks better than the guy who's a for sure first round talent though, so sure. Normal dev, you hate to see it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing in this rebuild. Please help. I've made career mistakes. I should have made this a, a Fortnite channel. I'm terrible at Fortnite. Caleb Tyson, welcome to the team. I wish the other guy had a hidden dev, but maybe this guy will be a good overall. I don't know. Get me out of here. I always have the same feeling at the end of rebuilds and that's just what's the uh guy who's pushing the rock uphill fucking what is it sisyphus yeah that's just what i feel like doing the same thing and getting the same results every time which are underwhelming results that's literally what this is <laughs> that's exactly what this is yeah this draft wasn't that good felix hickson's fine but i mean I, uh, that wasn't worth it but it could have been worse roberson actually was good even though he didn't look like it he had, he had 96 speed he ran like a god i don't even know what it, i don't want to know what his 40 time was it was probably like a 4-5. This game fucking sucks so bad. It is unbelievable. <laughs> Genuinely. I genuinely, I legitimately think Tim Roberson ran like a 4-5 or like a 4-4-8. I can't remember. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong, but that's just, that's crazy. That's, uh... <laughs> Tyler Evans, I think also was the better player. I don't know why he was, but I think he was. I think it was only like a one over, or maybe it was a two. Well, he didn't have a dev trait. I guess neither did the guy. The guy we took didn't have one either, but he's, Evans is better for some reason. I don't know why. I don't think literally anything was better about Evans. I mean, there must have been something. I guess he has better tackling. Cool. Oh, and what a call. What a call. I said Quincy Milner with the B finesse moves would have 70 finesse, and I said his power moves would be the same. They are both a 70. I know this game too well. What a call. <laughs> Caleb Tyson is a 77 with hidden dev. He's our best player that we got in that class, but none of these guys will make an impact literally at all. <laughs> I don't know what the hell the CPU did. Let's get into the final year of this rebuild. I'm gonna start going like bald or something. This is genuinely like the definition of insanity. I mean, I guess it's not because we're not doing the same thing and expecting different results. Well, we kind of are. We're making the team better and getting the same results, which is disappointment every year. Am I being dramatic? Possibly, but I feel like my my points are valid. I I don't know. Ooh, Justin Simmons got cut. We'll we'll take that. Absolutely, he'll start for us this year. He'll probably suck, but he'll start. But here is a look at the team heading into what is for sure the final year of the rebuild. We're only in eighty five, which is weird. Weren't we an 87 like two seconds ago? What did I do to the team? I didn't cut anyone important. I just added Justin Simmons. I, well, either way, we should develop throughout the year. Am I accidentally starting someone who's like not good? No? I don't know. Whatever. If we don't do well this year, then I, I, I don't know. I tried. I did. I don't know if an 85 ranks very high in the league though, so I guess I can't complain if we don't do well this year, but we also were an 87 like two seconds ago, and eight, an 85 is at least like maybe top half 
maybe. It's like mid, I think. But let's just get straight to the end of the year. I think we all know how this is gonna go, but we will see what our record is. Okay, well, here we are, shockingly, at the end of the year. But uh, to build suspense before I reveal how we did in year number five, if you haven't already, again, be sure to leave a like on the video. Uh, 2,500 likes if you wanna see me in pain again. I'll do something similar to this one. Hopefully that goes more smoothly than this, but I guess you never know. But we are an 88 overall at the end of the year. We developed three overall throughout the year. I don't think we were actually an 85 to start out the year, though. I mean, maybe we were. Ah, we might have been. I don't know. We were an 87 at one point during the preseason still. So I don't know what happened there, but also be sure to subscribe again if you haven't already. It'll make you an OG of the channel if you care about that and trying to hit 50k within the next few days. We are very close, growing very quickly. In year number five, we finished 13 and four and we made the playoffs. Now we didn't get a first round buy, but we still did ridiculously well. Our defense was still, I mean, the points per game allowed was good, but for yards, we were 28th in the league. I don't know what's wrong with our defense. I don't know how to fix that. I feel like I could have a 99 overall defense and it'll still be like 16th or something. I, I just don't know what to do about that. That's a skill issue, I guess. My fault, should have built it better. I don't know. Uh, Max Sutton though, 4,200 yards, 30 touchdowns, six picks, 74% completion percentage. Was pretty much the same as last year, just a few less touchdowns and a little better completion percentage. I guess he also had a few less picks. He's also had 4,200 yards every year and he's averaged like 34 four passing touchdowns, but he has gotten better every year pretty much. Damian Harris, maybe that was the big thing. Damian Harris did almost a full yard per carry better than whatever we've had at running back. I think our first thousand yard rusher, which is depressing because that isn't even that hard to get anymore. I guess there weren't that many in real life this year, but that was more like a, an injury thing and it was just a weird season in real life. But he also had 18 touchdowns, damn. Eric Burke though, 1,350 yards, 10 touchdowns. He's been been amazing. Back to back to back, at least 1,200 yard seasons is averaging like almost 1,300 per season. Gomez was decent. I wanted Hart to get more playing time. I thought he would. Does it just straight up use the number three receiver? I thought it uses the number one receiver the most. I don't know. I don't know how the Chiefs playbook works. I feel like I get different re receiving results with it every time I use it. Because this time, George Kittle didn't get many receptions. I don't understand it. Whatever. <laughs> Garrett Bowles wasn't great, but the rest of the line was. Our line has held up incredibly well throughout this rebuild. Normally that's a big problem, but no complaints there this time. Trenton Simpson led the team with 126 tackles, 112 for Tavon Jackson, tackles for loss, 12 for Thibodeau, 11 for Vea and Williams. And it looks like the defensive playbook did mostly fix things. Thibodeau with 12 sacks, 10 and a half for Williams, nine and a half for Vea. Not much outside of them, but four and a half for Mallard, three for Jackson. Vaughn Alexander was fucking terrible this year. Two sacks in 999 snaps. That's not great. I think I'm gonna to bench him maybe for Goodwin or Hickson. Hickson didn't get a single sack though, but I don't know. I almost forgot to check interceptions. Did we get any interceptions? Let me see. Maybe the... Our defense wasn't good though. That's the thing. <laughs> we put up good numbers, but as a whole, it was pretty bad. But Bob Wooden had four picks, three for Forbes, two for Simmons, and then one for a few players. So I... I like those numbers were really good, but we also allowed, what, the fifth most yards in the league? Trevor Lawrence wins another MVP. <laughs> Can we have some variation? Max Sutton at number seven, Kyle Larson up there, the NASCAR driver at number 10. It's cool. Puka Nakua wins Offensive Player of the Year. Damian Harris at number eight, Eric Burke at number 10. I'm surprised Burke wasn't higher. I guess he didn't have that many touchdowns, but I don't know. Alex Highsmith wins Defensive Player of the Year for the Rams. I was thinking about trading for him. I mean, he would have had like five sacks if we traded for him, so I'm glad I didn't, but if you would have done that, then I would have, but he wouldn't have. That was a confusing sentence, but you know what I mean. Kayvon Thibodeau at number eight. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Javier Loud for the Seahawks. Defensive Rookie of the year goes to Chris Dillard. The Lions are getting a lot of Rookie of the Year awards. They're like the, I don't know, I was gonna say Jets, but they won two in a year, but didn't win any this year. Now the Texans won two in the same year. I don't know why the NFL went with the same storyline back-to-back seasons, but whatever. <laughs> it's kind of uninteresting for the same team to win both awards. Maybe I'm just a mad Seahawks fan because the Seahawks got cucked back-to-back -back seasons, but uh, I don't know. I'm full of complaints today. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I know some people like it and think it's funny, but 
right? Uh, but we have a weak link scenario. We're going to be taking on the 49ers, which sounds scary, but they're usually not that good in this game. I guess they were pretty good here. They had the worst passing offense in the league, though, but that doesn't work out too bad for them because we have the, I thought we had the 28th pass D. We have the 29th, so, or oh, we have the 28th overall defense for yards. See, how, that doesn't even make sense. Like, how are we allowing that many yards, but ninth in touchdowns allowed in a good way? Second in sacks, second in takeaways, 10th in red zone percentage. Like, we're good at everything on defense, except having a good defense. <laughs> That's stupid. I guess we're just bend but don't break defense, but I, I hate bend but don't break defenses in real life, because a lot of the time they do end up breaking <laughs> when it actually matters. So we'll see if that happens here. But for the weak link scenario, I actually said it right. I always used to say wink leak, wink leak or something. I don't know. We'll go, what a, we were good at creating pressure. We were good at forcing turnovers. It's the 49ers offensive line pass much. So maybe slow down the pass would be a good one to go with to hit it. That's not what we need to do necessarily. We need to slow down the run, but I'm just thinking what we have the best chance of hitting. <laughs> and we have a first of many scenario. That's so sad that this is our first playoff game, but hey, this was a hard challenge. I knew it was going to be hard. We should have started doing better sooner, but at least we, it's better late than never, arguably. We'll go play it cool. Y'all know me, <laughs> but let's simulate this game out. <laughs> this very well could be the last game of the rebuild. Let's see. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we lose 28 to 24 and the 49ers end our rebuild. You hate to see it. You really do. But this was a very, very good team, especially considering where we started. Literally the worst team in the league by 20 overall, and we got it to here. So this is a great roster. I'm glad we at least had a good final season, even though we, did, we didn't get a single playoff win in this rebuild. We at least made the playoffs once. Was it worth it for my sanity? I, I don't know, but I did it and I survived. It just got really dark outside, like a cloud covered the sun or something. I feel like it should be the opposite now that I'm done. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed. This is a fun challenge if you ignore like our records every year. But if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like on the video. Again, I've said that like five times now. I'm sorry, but also do it right now. Be sure to subscribe too if you haven't already. Again, 50k soon. Trying to hit it. We're growing quick. Y'all know the drill. And let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below. But thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.